Hey, what to do, baby boo? The video that you're about to watch is roughly two to three weeks old. So this is just a little preface to the real video saying that the statistics that I say at the start of the video are a little bit wonky. The information in the video is still really, really valuable. But yeah, I just wanted you to know that the statistics are a little bit off. So without further ado, let's crack into the video. Hey, what to do, baby boo? So the other day I was looking for ideas for a YouTube video. A lot of my League of Legends inspiration comes from the Korean solo queue ladder. So what I did is that I went to op.gg and I saw that Peanut was ranked 11 at the moment. So I clicked on his profile and I saw that this dude had like a 76% win rate and it's, f it's freaking crazy. And so this video is going to be about seven jungle tips that I've learned from Peanut that you can apply to your jungle games today. So without further ado, let's crack into the video. The first tip that I'm going to be giving you is what I call the F key method. And I learned this tip from LS when he was coaching Sky and it was a super beneficial uh, strategy that I learned from that coaching lesson. And essentially what you do with the F key method is that when you're jungling, all you do is you look at, you press your F keys, F1, 2, 3, 4 and F5 to scope out the lanes. And you can do this as you're jungling to get a ton of information. For example, where the ganks are, where, you know, which side of the map you're supposed to be on, where the enemy jungler could be. You can you can get heaps of information by using this method. And this is why, you know, it's, it's so beneficial to use. A normal jungler, a low elo jungler watching this, you probably would have went blue, into wolves, into red, which is a, and then into top or mid. You either gank top or mid, which is standard. You would have like seen top relatively overextended, whether it's on the minimap or you actually used your F keys, which I highly doubt it. Danian said to do a level three gank route, so now I'm supposed to be going top, which I fully understand. But in this instance, you use the F key method to get information, and the information that you've gathered is that Jace is full health against a level one gangplank. There is no freaking way at all that you're getting this kill. There's no way at all. Gangplank scales in the mid to late game. He doesn't do, he does like pistol damage in the early game and Jace is full health. And we can take this strategy even further because, you know, Peanut would have used his F keys to look at top and be like, okay, there's no gank. He can just continue farming and that way he hasn't wasted any time at all. He didn't waste any time trying to go top and trying to kill this dude because it wasn't going to happen in the first place. So instead he just goes straight to farming, which is, it's super ben beneficial because a jungler's time is his most valuable resource. You have to use your time so effectively. So we use the F keys to judge this one. We judge this one. Okay, there's no gank there. But then you look bot. And then while he's taking Scuttler, you know, he's making use of his time efficiently, he sees that bot lane is having another fight. Once again, he used the F key method to scope out the lanes. You know, top lane's safe. Like, there's nothing happening here. Mid lane's safe. There's there's nothing happening here. But bot lane's having a fight. And so as a, you know, as a really, really good jungler would do, he would stop what he's doing and he just goes to the fight. Um, immediately, which is exactly what happens. He misses the spare, but look, he can just get the the kill here. He gets the kill on this dude. It's freaking three and a half minutes into the game, and they've already killed bot lane, killed both of them. Jin has a kill, Nidalee has a kill, and they miss this whole wave here, and potentially this wave here. With three and a half minutes in the game, Siva is gonna miss, um, or Severe, how do you, how do you frick you say your name? She's gonna miss a whole wave here, this wave, she's missed two waves, and she's died. So yeah, use your F keys, as you're jungling to scope out where the ganks are, where you need to be, where the enemy jungle could be, and all that other good stuff. The second tip is a counter jungling scenario. Now I'm going to play this clip here and I want you to, to properly analyze what's happening and think about the strategy that I'm just about to give you now, okay? So Rengar ganks bot. Nidalee's farming. And she goes into Rengar's jungle and takes his wolves. Now, if you haven't got it, okay, the simple tip is that when you recognize the enemy jungler on one side of the map, you need to have a counter move, okay? Because Nidalee's on the top side of the map, he's not in range to, to counter gank this, you know? It's going to take too long for him to walk to bot. So, you have to make do with what you have. And so that's exactly what Peanut does. Peanut recognizes that Rengar ganks bot. Because he ganks bot, that means that these two camps here are free reign. He can just do whatever he wants with them. He can, um, you know, get some vision over here. If he had a pink, he could ward this. He could take this camp away, take this camp away. And you think about it, if you're able to take two camps away from him, these camps don't respawn for another two and half minutes. If you do this twice, that's five minutes where these camps aren't available to Rengar. That's five minutes of the early game that you've completely like screwed up for him, which is freaking, it's ridiculous. It's, it's actually crazy how much you can um, stuff up the enemy jungle by doing this, okay? Not only do you get the gold, like you could get like maybe uh, whatever, 200, 300 gold from these two camps. Anytime that you see the enemy jungler on the opposite side of the map, can you go into the his side of the jungle, the opposite side of the jungle, and take away his two camps? Can you get you know, deep vision while he's over here and just chuck a ward over here. Just take as much as you can while he's on the opposite side of the map. The third tip that I can give you is called the Santa Claus gank, okay? The reason why I call it the Santa Claus gank is because of the poles. You know, when when you think of Santa Claus, you know, Santa 
course, lives in the North Pole or whatever. If you see Rengar going for a gank on the South Pole of the map, okay, on the southern side of the map, then you can do a Santa Claus gank and you can go on the top side of the map. The north side of the map, you can attack the north pole, if that makes sense. This gank is perfect for those who you don't know what to do when the enemy jungler keeps ganking your lanes. If you're close to a lane and you see that the enemy jungle ganks bot or top or whichever side of the map, then you gank the complete opposite side. The reason why this is so beneficial is because you know that he's not going to be there for a counter gank. And this way, when the enemy jungler ganks, you know, one of your laners, it's not as bad because you have a counter move. You can go and gank the other side of the map and then it kind of evens, evens the scales about, um... I can't even speak English. It even the scales a bit, if that makes sense. So yeah, look for opportunities where the enemy jungler ganks your lanes and then gank the other side of the map. The fourth thing that we can take away from Peanut's play is to ping your teammates uh, if you think that the enemy jungle is going to gank him. He actually doesn't do it in this clip, but I thought it would still be a really, really good point. Because we know that Nidalee, you know, Peanut is playing on this side of the map. If Rengar's smart, he can do the Santa Claus gank, which is exactly what he does. Rengar notices that Nidalee went top, tried to gank. Well, he did gank Jace and he killed him. So he's thinking this exact same thing. He's thinking, okay, I'm going to do a Santa Claus gank. He doesn't freaking call it the Santa Claus gank gank obviously but he says I'm gonna attack the opposite side of the map because I'm not gonna get counter ganked by Nidalee so to counteract this move all you need to do is ping your teammates to play safe okay it only takes like three or four pings um to play safe for some reason you know low elo players think that they you can only ping your teammates if they make a mistake you're like oh you suck blah, 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 blah. but did you know that pinging is actually an effective form of communication with your teammates a positive one so yeah when you're on one side of the map just ping your teammates to play safe on the opposite side of the map and that way they won't get they're not in danger of any santa claus ganks from the enemy jungler the next tip is to snowball a winning lane um so we're taking it back to the first clip that i showed you this is a common mistake that so many freaking low elo junglers make that it's honestly ridiculous don't waste your time trying to help people who are feeding their nuts off if one of your teammates is zero and three there's no point going to try and help them. You want to help the people who are already winning and you want to snowball them because they have the big, uh, the biggest opportunity to carry you. And that's exactly what um, Peanut did in this scenario. And then you look bot and these guys were fighting and this lane was winning, right? So Peanut just goes bot, bot gets the kill, gets um, Siva misses out on this wave, on this wave and all of a sudden now the lane that was already winning, you can help them snowball even further and then they can they have a better chance of carrying you. The way that I want you to think about this um, is through an analogy, and I call it the fence analogy. Imagine there's this fat ass dude, okay? There's just this freaking fat ass dude, and he's sitting on one side of the fence, okay? So this is the fat dude, and then this is the fence. And the goal is to make him go to the other side of the fence. And then in another scenario, there's a fat ass dude, but he's sitting on the fence, and the goal is to make him go on the other side of the fence. Which one do you think is easier to push to the other side? Do you think it's going to be easier to freaking pick this dude up, put him on the fence and then push him over? Or do you think it's going to be a lot easier just to give this dude a little tip so he can push over to the other side of the fence? Obviously, the answer is to just give that dude who's already on the fence a little tap so he can get on the other side of the fence and you can kill the Nexus. <laughs> so yeah, the key takeaway is to snowball winning lanes. Gank lanes that are already winning. Don't waste your time trying to gank lanes where they're feeding their nuts off because there's a good potential that the enemy laner can 2v1 anyway. So just focus on the winning lanes, okay? The second to last tip is to take the first turret. The easiest lanes to take the first turret is obviously the ones that are already winning. For example, in this clip, Jin and Tom Kench are already winning the lane, so, you know, they've had enough pressure on the turret. It's eight minutes in and they're taking the first turret. The reason why this is so beneficial and why you should be aware of, you know, the first turret is obviously because it gives the extra bonus gold. I think, like, it's an extra 300 or something. That's actually not the most important part. The most important part is that it now gives you extra map pressure. These guys can rotate top if they wanted to. Take this turret. It will be a numbers advantage, 2v1 versus Jace and Gale. Gangplank can roam bot and just farm this turret safe. They don't lose this turret because Gangplank is here to save it. Top lane, they can potentially get this turret because it's 2v1. And then you just rinse and repeat. Once you've got these two turrets, now you have even more map pressure. Jin and Tom Kench and Gangplank, maybe they can push the wave, go back to base, buy items, and then group mid, and then take this turret. And that's how the sl the, the objective snowball starts, okay? There's a dude who was rank 1 on OCE. Um, and this was like a couple years ago and his name was Radier and legit the 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 tactic that he used He would just get this first heart as fast as possible then rotate top then take this turret go back to base Catch the wave if it came again, but if not just go back to base buy items take this turret go back to base get healthy Catch the waves again, and then get the next turret and that's how well That's one of the tactics that he used to get to rank one So the essentials is to look at the lanes identify the lanes that are winning the most and then try and take their turret as soon as possible so that you can get the rotation starting, you know, so they can rotate, start helping the other lanes, um, take the other turrets, and so on and so forth. 
And the very last tip that I'm going to give you is counter jungling. Um, it's kind of similar to the counter jungling that I mentioned before, but in this scenario, it's actually very, very different. When you have the snowball rolling, obviously you have extra gold. Okay, with this, you know, these two turrets gone. And with the extra pressure that you have, you can now go into the enemy jungle and you can start to ward up. Um, you can start to ward over here is a really good spot. Here is the best spot in my opinion and you can ward here. With this extra vision, obviously it's a lot easier to counter um, to counter jungle now because you can see when the enemy um, when the enemy champions come, when the enemy team comes. So remember what I said before. Remember I said you can take two camps away. Now that you have extra pressure on the map and you have extra vision and stuff like that, you have free reign to go over their whole camp, their whole jungle camp. You can get one, two, three, four, five, six. You can get six camp camps that take at least two and a half minutes to respawn. And imagine if you take all six camps, even three or four camps, if you take those away from the enemy jungler, you know, Rengar might miss out on, you know, four camps, and so he's like, oh damn, I'm super far behind, I need to go catch up. So he goes mid, and now he has to share experience and gold with Malzahar, which is going to put him behind, which has this cascading snowball effect. But not just that, this strategy of counter jungling when you're ahead, um, is even more effective against champions like Amumu and Hikarim. When you're versing champs that scale in the mid to late game, you can actually close the game out within like 15 or 20 minutes by taking away all their camps. You're not even giving them that window of opportunity to come in and try and farm up and get their gold and you know start to scale into the mid to late game. You're just ending it as soon as fast, um, as soon as possible by taking their camps away. Um, so the essentials, the actionable stuff that you do, is that once you have got the turret snowballing, once you realize that you're in a, a head position, start to go a bit deeper with your teammates. Start to go and take control of their enemy jungle. Have a ward here, ward here, ward here. And whenever possible, whenever the camps are up and you've got people with you, um, don't be scared to go in and take away you know, their camps because it's going to completely suffocate the enemy. I actually mentioned this in a previous video of mine called the Milk It Method. Um, so if you want to check out that video as well, then I'll leave a link here or something. So those are the seven tips that you can learn from the good old peanuts. Alrighty, so we're back. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video and if you learned something new, I ask that you click the thumbs up button. I've got more jungle guides and jungle content coming out for you low elo junglers. So if you want to be the first people to access my jungle content as soon as it comes out, um, then all you've got to do is hit the subscribe button below and then you turn the notifications on. And now I'm going to turn it over to you. Which jungle tip helped you the most this video? Did you like the Santa Claus gank or did you like none of the magics? Or did you like the milk it method? Which one of the two did you like the most? Comment below to let me know which one you liked. If this video gets over 500 comments within 48 hours, I will pin a comment to this video telling you the number one jungler that I've been using to straight up stomp my smurf games. Um, on my smurf it's like low plat and I think I had like a above an 80% win rate with one particular champion that I just, I just spammed the dick out of it. This is just a really quick notice that I'm going to be offering coaching in roughly two to three weeks. So if there's anybody who's watching this and you're interested in being personally coached by me, make sure that you watch out for the next video that's coming out in roughly, yeah, two to three weeks. And I'll let you know more about the coaching offer in that next video. So have a good day. I love you. Stay beautiful. Shana Ducks.